What is happening everybody? Welcome back to another video. I keep getting the question how much I spent building this green truck. So I'm gonna break it down for you guys today and go through all the parts I used to build this truck. And this is no labor at all. There's no labor, I did it all myself. So there's no labor cost, this is just for parts. So for those of you new to the channel, this is a 1990 Toyota pickup. It has the 5VZ 3.4 liter swap from a newer Tacoma. And if you want more of a breakdown on what all we did to this truck, go check out my transformation video. I'll have that linked up in the corner if you're interested in that. Let's get down to it. So we're gonna start with the motor swap. Now this is something that varies a lot in price, depending on where you get it and what all you need. For the motor swap itself, you're gonna need the motor, you're gonna need the wiring harness, and you're going to need the ECU. And then obviously all the little stuff like the air intake, the radiator hoses, just little stuff like that. So this is gonna vary a lot, and I kinda came up with a average price is gonna be right around 1500 bucks where you're gonna spend the money on the motor, the harness, and the ECU. You can get it cheaper than that. If you go to some shops, they're gonna charge you a lot more. Some wrecking yards are gonna charge you a lot more than that, but I feel like safely the average price for a motor, harness, and ECU is right around 1500 bucks. The nice thing about this truck, this was originally a 3.0 truck, the transmission bolts right up to the motor and the motor mounts bolt right up. So there's no modifications there, there's no cost in that. The only thing you really need to modify on the motor is the oil pan. Underneath, you can see it's got a rear sump oil pan if you have a front sump like what's factory on this 3.4 out of the Tacoma, the oil pan will hit the steering right there. So you're gonna need the rear sump oil pan kit. That costs 360 bucks, brand new for the whole pan. They also give you the relocation for the dipstick. You can see the factory dipstick on these comes out in the front up by the timing cover here. And with that rear sump pan, you have to relocate the dipstick farther back. So that is 360 bucks for that entire kit. One other thing you're gonna need to get this motor to run is the conversion harness. So basically, it's a conversion harness that plugs into the factory Tacoma harness and plugs into the rest of the truck. So you can get these off-road solutions has them, toy only swaps has them. They're right around 630 bucks from off-road solutions. And it's a very easy harness. You plug it in and you're done. So I would say, if you're not really good with wiring, I would definitely go that route. Definitely easier, you just plug it in and you're done. Another thing I did when I put this motor in is a complete tune-up. I did coils, I did spark plug wires, spark plugs. I also did a new math because some of these parts were cheap Chinese knockoffs. They weren't OEM and it just wasn't running right. So I went to the junkyard actually, bought used OEM coils, OEM math, and obviously I did brand new plugs and wires. But all that, I'm right around 300 bucks into that. It also had cheapo injectors. They were just knockoffs. They it ran like crap, they leaked. So I did do a set of OEM injectors. That was 240 bucks. Those are from Motor West Performance. They're a lot cheaper through them. They're not brand new. They are rebuilt, completely rebuilt, and they're amazing for the price. You can't beat them, way cheaper than OEM. So those are 240 bucks. Another thing you're gonna wanna do, in any motor swap really, if you ever pull a motor out, you might as well do a clutch. The new clutch I used cost 245 bucks, not too bad. You might as well do that. Another quick added cost would be a flywheel resurface. That's gonna vary on your shop, usually around 50 bucks. Moving on to the rest of the truck, we got a new set of wheels and tires. These are a 16 by 10 Pro Comp wheel. Those were 550 bucks. The Thunderer Track Grip tires, which honestly, very, very impressed with these things. It's about a 33, it's a 265.75, right about a 33 inch tall tire. But these were 630 bucks, brand new off eBay, and they ride extremely well on the road. Obviously, they're not halfway worn or three quarters of the way worn out, so they're probably gonna get louder as they wear. But so far, they drive really nice on the road great off-road in the dirt in the mud so i wouldn't go spend a bunch of money on like toy omts which are you know double that these tires do just fine i'm actually very very impressed with them so far another thing i had to do is go through this front end when i tried to get in alignment the lower control arm bolts were completely seized i had to cut those out replace the bolts replace the bushings i also had to replace the sway bar end links and the torsion bar bolts that ran me about 200 bucks. Then 
once I got the truck done and running and driving, I noticed the rear axle was leaking. So the bearings were completely shot in the rear axle. So I went through, did new rear axle bearings and seals. That was right around 130 bucks. This truck has a inch and a half body lift, which is almost needed. You don't need a full inch and a half, but this motor sits taller than the 3.0. This intake sits a lot taller, so you're gonna need at least an inch body lift, I would say. So this inch and a half body lift was right around 100 bucks, and then I also did body mounts. The stock mounts were completely shot, so I went through and did the polyurethane mounts. That was 65 bucks, so really not that bad for a complete mount kit. Coming up front here to the front end, I did a new grill, new headlight surrounds, corner lights, and headlights. The headlights and the harness to run these headlights on these trucks was 105 bucks. The grill and the headlight surrounds was 55 bucks. And the corner lights, I believe, were 40. Coming around back, I did new tail lights. These are just an OEM, basically an OEM replacement. Look like a factory light. But mine were all busted up, so I just bought new ones. These were 50 bucks. Coming to the inside of the truck, it never had any carpet, so I bought a whole carpet kit. That was 165 bucks. The seats and console I bought, these I just got from a regular junkyard. The seats are a Scion TC, and the center console is from a Nissan Xterra. I paid 50 bucks for the seats and center console. So very cheap, if you can get stuff at the junkyard, definitely do it. They're actually in very good shape, so happy we could save some money there. I also did new shocks, front and rear. These are the KYB Mono Max. You can see the red shock there coming up front. You can see there, these are a very, very good shock. They actually ride really nice. They're not super stiff like the Bilsteins, and they're very reasonable. I paid 235 bucks for shocks all the way around, so not too bad there. Now, one of my most common questions is how much I spent on the Raptor Liner. So I use quite a bit of Raptor Liner on this thing. I did two full coats on the exterior. I did two full coats, the whole engine bay, and then the bumpers are coated. I coated the inside of the bed with the black, and then obviously the rear bumper is coated as well. Now I used about 10 bottles on the exterior of the truck. I used, I believe, two bottles, maybe three, can't remember, on the whole engine bay and underside of the hood. And then each bumper took one bottle, and then I used a full four bottle kit for the inside of the bed. All that ran right around 600 bucks. So really for a full paint job, 600 bucks in material, not that bad. I also had quite a bit of body work to do, so I'm gonna just kind of bundle that all together with the primers, the fillers, that kind of stuff. Right around 300 bucks for all that kind of stuff. So that's 900 bucks for a complete paint job in just materials. Obviously, if you had someone do it, it costs a lot more for labor, but materials, 900 bucks, can't complain with that. These fender flares are from jungleflares.com. These were 250 bucks. I built these bumpers myself, front and rear, and just in materials, I'm about 600 bucks in. That's basically all the steel, the shackle mounts, the lights up front. I did blinkers. You can see the blinkers there, the pod lights, uh, the wiring harness, the switch, everything to do with the bumpers, right around 600 bucks. I also did a complete two and a half inch exhaust system with a Flowmaster muffler. I just bought the whole weld it yourself kit, basically just pieces and bends and did it all myself. I'm right about 150 bucks into that with the muffler. So very cheap, very reasonable, can't complain with that. And anytime you do a truck build, there's the little things. The little things that you can't remember what you paid for, the little things you can't remember you even bought. Little hoses, hardware, wiring, all the little stuff. I'm gonna say right around 500 bucks for all that, and it's honestly probably more. You know, even like the mirrors, I bought new door handles, uh, latches for the rear window, just little stuff like that. It all adds up. It's probably honestly more than 500, but we're gonna say 500 bucks for miscellaneous parts and pieces. So that puts us at a total of $8,050 for parts and materials. That's not including the truck itself. Obviously, it depends where you live, what you buy. You can spend anywhere from $500 to $10,000 on a truck. So I'm not going to include the price of the truck in my build. 
just because the price varies so much, maybe you already have a truck and you're not gonna really factor that in. So that $8,050 is basically what I'm into this truck. So really not too bad for a completely rebuilt truck. The only thing I really didn't do is rebuild the motor or the tranny. Everything else I really went through and rebuilt. If you already had a truck with a good tranny, a good front end, good rear end, you know, decent interior, not completely rebuilding the truck, you could do it for a lot cheaper if you were doing a 3.4 swap. And honestly, this motor swap is amazing in these trucks. This motor is a lot better than the 3.0. A lot more reliable, a lot more powerful, and just a more modern engine that is a lot easier to work on too than the 3.0. So if you got a 3.0, if it's blown up or not, I would highly recommend this swap just because it's so easy. There's no adapter plates at all. The motor and training bolt together. Like I said, the motor mounts bolt right onto the factory mounts. You don't have to do any fab work with that. So for the simplicity of the swap and how good this motor is, I would say it's a very good swap for these older trucks because the 3.0s really do have their issues and the 3.4 is a very, very good motor. Well, there it is guys. I hope it helps you out. If you guys are interested in this truck, I will be selling it soon. I do want to get some miles on it and work out all the little bugs with it. There's a couple little things I need to finish up. For the most part, it's done. It's been running really good, driving amazing. It's really nice having this truck all rebuilt. It drives like a brand new truck, so very impressed with that. I hope all my videos help you guys out. I really appreciate all the support on the channel. It's been amazing. We're starting to grow a little bit, so I'm super stoked about that. I do have another build coming up on the channel very soon, so super excited to get started on that. Definitely stay tuned on the channel if you're interested in seeing what we're building next. I hope this video helps you guys out. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.